Good afternoon and welcome to St. Edward's on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Would you please stand? Here in this place, new light is streaming. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. On this beautiful Saturday afternoon, it's wonderful to come together once again, as we always do, bringing our hearts to the Lord, first of all asking Him to cleanse our hearts, reminding ourselves of those things which have not been the love of a Christian. We ask our Lord to forgive us and fill us with his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of goodwill.
us pray. O God, who in the, ab- in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Our eyes 
eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for His mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord.
They were offended. Offended by Jesus. He spoke with clarity, power, conviction, truth. He was inspirational. They recognized that he did wonderful things. He performed miracles. Conclusion? They were offended. How is that possible? No, you're the carpenter. You can't be all that. You're not allowed to be all that. Get back into your box. You're not allowed to be better than we are. You're not allowed to be bigger than we are. You're not allowed to be more important than we are. You're one of us. Who are you to tell me what's true? Who are you to tell me what's right and wrong? What's the best way for me to live my life? I will decide to do that for myself. Doesn't matter if you're inspiring and if you have miraculous actions to back it up. None of that matters because you have no business telling me how to live my life. Who do you think you are? Only God knows what was really going through their heads. I wonder if any of that was. But today's gospel brings to us a little challenge, a, a, a little problem. And the problem is not the messenger. And the problem is not the message. Jesus is not the difficulty here, and nor is what he's saying what the difficulty. Don't even talk about what he says. But what the gospel brings out really clear is, though, even though the messenger is the savior of the world, and the message that he has is the message of salvation, they're offended by it. What a huge contrast. The heart of the one who was receiving the message from the Messiah is the heart of that is offended. That's hard to get your head around. Isn't it a great thing that we're really nothing like the Jews that Jesus grew up with? Or maybe it's a little sad that even after 2,000 years, we're still sometimes like them. Well, I don't want to offend anyone. How many times have you heard yourself say that or heard someone else say that in the last week or the last month? You know, and I think back, maybe it's just because I'm not as aware of it, but I think back, say, 10 years ago. Did you hear that phrase, half as much as you hear it nowadays, well, I don't want to offend anyone. They were offended by Jesus Christ. They took offense at Jesus Christ and the message of salvation. So Jesus quickly apologized and says, I'm sorry, that's just my opinion. Everyone has their own opinion. <laughs> no, <laughs> he didn't do that. It's not what he did. They were offended, and he was amazed. Wow. How, how are you not able to believe? What is it in your heart that's blocking you from being able to believe the good news? For me, I, I'm, I'm love with legs and arms. I am the loving God, the creator of the universe. I created you. I love you to death. I'm going to die on a cross for you. And you're offended by my very presence. 
What's going on in your heart? What's keeping you from believing? He was amazed at their lack of faith. Now, if this is true for Jesus, imagine how true that was for the prophets. You know, we read from prophet Ezekiel, and it was the same thing. Go and preach your message. They're not going to listen to you because they're hard-headed and they're rebellious, but you go and you let them know that I'm talking to them. And here's my message. That's what God told the prophet to do. Now, the prophet is not Jesus. Prophets were sinful people just like we are. They were not sinless. So how much easier it is to reject the message of someone who's a sinner? Or what about the prophetic voice of the church? Sure, there was a time when we used to think that the church could do no wrong. <laughs> That's definitely not the case. It's hardly, you know, can the, do, can the church do anything right now? It's a very different place. And if the church cannot be heard as a prophetic voice, because, oh, well, the church got problems, therefore, automatically, the message is messed up. We can't really trust that message. But is that really what's going on in our world today? If the people of Jesus' hometown took offense at the Savior of the world and his message, could it maybe possibly be that it's not just because the church is messed up or because the message of the church is messed up, but because there's a lack of faith? There's something going on in our hearts today, in our world today, that's blocking us. If you cannot believe Jesus or not believe a prophet, much easier is it for it, much easier for it, it, us is it not to believe the church. And if that's the case, take it a step further. When we were baptized, we were, bap- we were baptized to be priest, prophet, and king. You were baptized, every single one of us were baptized to be prophets, to be a prophetic voice in the world about what is good and true and beautiful. And if we can't believe the church, how credible does that make me? Not me, priest, me, Christian. It all starts to fall apart. Why? Because we think that they're offended because of who we are. Or they think that they're offended because our message is the wrong message. They were offended at Jesus Christ. Much of the offense that can take place in our world today, not because we have a a, a false message, not because of the messenger or the message. There's offense because of where that person is who's receiving the message. So let's all judge them and point our finger at them. Horrible people who don't have faith. No, let's not do that. (laughs) Let's do what Jesus did. Wow. What can I do? What can I do to help that heart to be more open? How can I possibly do something different so that the prophetic voice of God who wants to work in me, not me priest, me Christian. I was baptized to be a prophet. Our world is in dire need for a prophetic voice. And we're scared to death that we might offend somebody. Well, I don't know. I think my message is wrong. I'm not really sure the church is teaching me what I should really say. Why are we so afraid? What's happened? Why have we been stripped from our prophetic voice? Well, because people get offended, Father. We don't want to offend anybody. 
Jesus Christ offended them. Because he was a mean person, he had a horrible message. Because he was a hateful person, he was a bigot. Is that why Jesus offended people? I sure hope that's not what you think. I certainly don't believe that. I think Jesus is loving, and the message that we have is the message of love. But the message of love and the message of truth go together. If we go through our very confused world and we don't have any ability to say in a very loving, kind, beautiful way, you know what? I love you to death, but I disagree. I don't think that that's the path towards happiness. I don't think that that's the best choice for your life. I don't think that's going to turn out well for you. I'm sorry to disagree with you. I don't, I don't try, I'm not trying to disagree with you. The only reason I disagree with you is because I love you. And I don't want you to, to, to make a choice that is really not going to make you happy. And I really think that. And I think that because, I, because that's what Jesus told me too. It is time for us to recuperate our prophetic voice in the world. And that means that we will offend people. Not because we want to. Not because we're trying to. Not because we're going to be evil and nasty and mean and judgmental. Just the opposite. Because we're called to love and disagree. You know, parents do this all the time. I don't want to tell you that. You're a lot of your parents, grandparents. You do that all the time with your kids. You have to disagree with them and love them. And eventually, they get it. Eventually. In the moment, they kind of hate you. I want candy now. I'm sorry, honey. That's not what's going to be best for you. We can do that with our kids. Why can't we do that with our brothers and sisters? Well, who am I? You're a brother and a sister. That's who you are. You're a Christian. You follow Jesus Christ who taught a message that offended people. How can we possibly say we're going to be good Christians and think that we're not going to offend anybody? What sense does that make? Why have we swallowed the lie that the, the worst sin in the world is to offend somebody? Simeon said to Mary, this child is destined to be a sign that is to be rejected and a sword will pierce your own soul. Jesus prayed at the Last Supper, Father, I passed your word on to them and the world hated them. Be not afraid, for I have conquered the world. Enough with the fear of the world hating us, because we love them and we disagree. And the them are our own family members. They're the people that we live with and we work with and we, we love them. And it's okay for us to disagree with them because many things going on in our world today are not Christian. It's not the way that Jesus Christ taught us to live. It's not the beautiful, good, true, and happy life that Jesus taught us to live. It's false. It's lies and is damaging. And we're called to be prophetic voices that lovingly and gently contradict. Dear Jesus, they took offense at you, and they will take offense at us. We beg you to give us understanding, compassion, and courage to bring your message of love into a world that you have warned us will take offense. 
but afterwards they may believe. Make us your prophets as you've called us to be. Amen. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now lift up our prayers to our Heavenly Father, trusting in His loving care. That the prophetic voice of the Church never cease to proclaim the saving cross of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the religious freedoms of our country was founded upon be cherished and preserved, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the arms of the rich embrace the poor and the feet of the wayward find safe return, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all believers may serve as messengers of God's word in daily life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families wounded through separation and divorce, may all members find healing and support, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in mind, body, and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have sacrificed to keep us safe and live in freedom, for our departed family and friends, especially Martha Jean Farmer and Robert Lassley, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray for William Ward Sr., for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for always hearing our prayers and granting them through your Son who came to give himself on the cross so that these prayers may be answered. In his name we pray, amen. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see your face. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see. Open my ears, Lord. 
me to hear your voice. Open my ears. Help me to hear. Open my heart. Help me to love like you. Open my heart. Help me to love. And the first shall be last and our brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings Within your, with your divinity, and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, so that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation, and through Christ, through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. 
ever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Leave me 
behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life was born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple announcements. You may have received a recorded message phone call already about this. If you haven't, um, you may be getting one. Or another reminder, please help me to learn your names and faces by being part of our photo session. Uh, you can get a free photo and a free um, parish directory by participating. The photo sessions will be from July 20th to 24th. Uh, you can sign up online. There's also sign up after uh, on the way out uh, of Mass today at the table in the back. Uh, also a quick reminder that the blood drive uh, will be this Wednesday, July 21st, not this Wednesday, but July 21st uh, from 3 to 7 p.m. in the cafeteria instead of the gym this time around because we have our vocation Bible school and they'll be using part of the, the gym during that week. I think that's it. Have a blessed Sunday. And uh, do me a favor. Don't go and get in a fight with anybody on purpose because Father said that I can offend you now and there's no problem. I don't think we have to go and pick fights. <laughs> but uh, there's certainly a, a clear message our Lord brings us today that sometimes the Christian presence is not a comfortable presence and there's nothing to be ashamed of about that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. O oh, beautiful, far spacious skies, or amber waves of grain, for Oh.